meeting for Tuesday, April 19th, 7 p.m. Can we have a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, fire evacuation procedures in the event of a fire emergency. There's a door in the back of the room you could exit, or you go up the door we came in out here and down the stairs and away from the building. Uh, roll call, please. Donna Corbin Zabinski. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Robert Hendrickson. Here. Kevin Zorda. Present. Net Nancy Martin. Here. Sean Dean. Ann Collins. Here. Phil Kabar. Present. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I like Over. to. Cobra. Cobra. I'd like to seat Phil as we do have a vacant uh, full time member seat. So Phil can be seated for today. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is public participation. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak regarding items not on the agenda? Uh, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on items not on the agenda? One last time, anybody would like to speak on items not on the agenda? Seeing none, we move forward. Uh, we have agent comments. Anybody to my right? Welcome. Anybody to my left? Yeah. No? Okay, good. Um, I just have one question. Well, I'll get to it at the end. We'll do it at the end. Um, correspondence. I didn't have any correspondence for today. Mm -hmm. uh, approval of minutes from April 5th. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from April 4th, uh, 5th meeting. Second. Okay, do I have discussion? Not saying none. Roll call, please. Donna Corbin Sabinski. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Nancy Martin. Yes. Ann Collins. Yes. Phil Kaper. Cobra. 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 Yes. <laughs> uh, seven in favor. Motion passes. Uh, next is the town of Turner report that we received dated March 28th regarding items in litigation. Uh, we have no public hearings and no new public hearings. So next will be our old business. Item A, X, A, 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 126, agent approval for the removal of two beaver dams on Freshwater Brook Town Easement located above the intersection of Freshwater Boulevard and Cranbrook Drive, Town of Enfield, applicant owner, BL and BG zones. Okay, so this came in probably two days ago as an emergency because it was causing significant public health and safety risks to the public over by freshwater brook um, it's right a little bit past costco it's two locations along freshwater brook there's two dams um, two beavers they're backing up the water really badly to the point where the sewer pump is completely underwater and it should not be underwater um, it's most likely still flooded right now so um, it was an agent approval decision to let the town go in. Um, they're working with the state, the wildlife division, and they're removing those beaver dams and they're getting a beaver trapper. Mm -hmm. um, just to note, she did contact me during the week and asked and I said to make it an agent approval because it is an emergency situation. It had to be addressed right away. So um, they trap them and take them out. They the trap them place. and then they take them somewhere else where they can be released. Yeah. So they could be happy somewhere else. Yes. Yes. Okay. Next on the agenda is new business. IW 651-30 Woodlawn Avenue, Wetland Permanent. Um, excuse me, Chair. Oh, we need I'm sorry. Do we have to make a motion for that I agent approval? That. I think we should. Yeah, I think we should. Let's go back. Sorry about that. I Pardon. will make a motion that we approve the agent approval for <laughs> XAAA number 126. Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Donna Corbin Savinsky. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Nancy Martin. Yes. Ann Collins. Yes. Phil Colbert. Yes. <laughs> Seven in favor. Motion I'm passes. <laughs> She's getting there. Sorry about that. Next is IW 651 30 Woodlawn Avenue, wetland permit modification for a new location of a single family home only on Woodland Avenue. Jeffrey Filiot. Owner applicant, yep. MAP 33, lot 125, R33 zone. Hey, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, good evening. Uh, Jeff Filial, 17 Falcon Crest, Infill, Connecticut. Hi, welcome. Welcome. I'm here for a modification. Mm -hmm. I was in here probably about two months ago or three months ago. I'm sure you probably remember me. Uh, where we want to increase the backyard of the property, of the house. Mm -hmm. um, on the new plans, 
we're not really changing any of the area we're crossing the wetlands basically with the driveway we're not touching any of that we're just basically moving the house forward roughly about 19 20 feet to get the backyard a little bigger yard and everything, else is everything else is the same yeah mm -hmm. so. any questions to my right any questions to my left discussion um, I did see on the previous approval, we did have a site condition of the silt fencing and hay bales. So if we could make sure we add that back. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, everything's going to be the same. We're just yeah. basically just, in a nutshell, moving the house. Pushing it back. 20 feet forward, making a little backyard. Right. Um, and, Georgie, all the original paperwork stays with this application? Yep, it's all the original um, paperwork. There wasn't a big change in drainage. There wasn't a big change in impact or disturbance. They just wanted to increase the backyard by about three, four feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, just to reiterate for the record, the last site-specific condition was for silt fencing and hay barrels used around soil stockpiling and driveway construction to protect wetlands. Right. Thank you. Is there any more discussion, comments, questions? Seeing none. All right, I will make a motion to approve IW number 65130 Woodlawn Avenue wetlands permit modification for a new location of a single family home only on Woodlawn Ave. Jeffrey Filia, owner, applicant, map 33, lot 125, R33 zone, with a site specific condition of adding hay bales and silt fencing around the temporary stockpiling of soil and the uh, driveway construction. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Seconded by Nancy. Yeah. Right, correct. Okay. Any discussion? Yep. Seeing none. Can we have roll call. Donna Corbin Savinsky. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Nancy Martin. Yes. Ann Collins. Yes. Phil Cober. Yes. Seven in favor. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. An easy one to do today. Yeah. <laughs> like that. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Next on our agenda is IW652, the Enfield Housing Authority Wetland Permit Modification for Changes in the Berms, Grading and Excavation within the Upland Review, Review Area, Enfield Housing Authority, Applicant Owner, Map 19, Lot 235, HR33 Zone. Good evening, gentlemen. Could you state your name and addresses for the record? Sure. Good evening. I'm Scott Bertrand, Executive Director, Enfield Housing Authority, 1 Pearson Way, Enfield, Connecticut. And I have with me... Good evening. My name is Daniel Jameson, project manager with Design Professionals and Professional Engineer in the State of Connecticut. Welcome. Okay. Uh, could you give us an overview, Georgia? Yes. Thanks. Thank you for coming tonight. Oh, thank you. Um, just a quick background. This is also a modification to the original approval, IW number 597. Changes are proposed along this site that required a modification to their original approval. The property is a 12-acre site that contains an elderly and disabled housing facility. The need for the site improvements are because the original buildings were built too close to the property lines, leaving very little room for expansion. They were also built in the mid-1960s. This current setup is not sustainable or feasible for the future. Therefore, the applicant's new proposal includes minor changes to the site and the addition of more apartment units, more parking spaces, new driveways, as well as improving the existing roads to include more senior-friendly transportation services. In regards to the wetlands, the area of existing woods along the eastern property lines contains about 80,000 square feet of wetlands, according to their delineation report. The original approval granted the demolition of the existing buildings in preparation for the construction of two new buildings. According to the applicant's narrative, neither the original approval or modification include direct impacts or disturbances to the wetlands area. The original approval also granted impacts of 16,000 square feet in the Upland Review area. This new proposal is increasing that by 1,217 square feet due to the new site grading along the eastern tree line. The purpose of the new grading is to increase the overall elevation of the site. 
Um, three new underground culverts and catch basin systems are proposed to convey collected stormwater. The northern and southern system will catch stormwater runoff from the parking and paving areas adjacent, adjacent to the two proposed buildings and then to a separator for treatment. And then lastly, discharging directly into the wetlands. The other underground collection system will convey collected stormwater runoff to the proposed water quality basin for treatment and detainment. Outflow from this basin will lead into the southern system for discharge. This system was designed for the 25-year storm event conditions, which is what is recommended by the town of Enfield. The water quality basin was sized in accordance with the 2004 Connecticut Stormwater Quality Manual. Um, there was one comment from planning and zoning and two recommended site-specific conditions. The one comment from planning and zoning was the silt fencing stops rather short of the proposed new parking areas. This was also seen in the last approval. Um, we recommend the silt fencing to be included around the property lines behind the new berms. The designated snow piles are also not shown on these plans, which was a condition of approval on the original approval as well. And the demolition plan sheet was not submitted in this modification. However, the demolition plan was also part of the previous approval and that's pretty much um, they're pretty similar to the last one as well um, the engineer informed me because I, I did call them last week to talk about the silt fencing and the snow plan and the demolition plan um, and I was informed that the silt fencing is shown on sheet 9 of 17 and it will be for the entire duration of the project um, however additional silt fencing should be added around the northern and southern property lines as well with that being said the two site specific conditions that are recommended one being silt fencing will also be included around the berms by the property lines on the northeast and south sides. And final plans must include the demolition plan sheet, which I think they're planning on submitting anyways. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Would you like to give us some overviews and comments? Or? Yeah. Or Georgina, thank you for such a thorough overview. Absolutely. <laughs> That's my job. Never that good. <laughs> Uh, yes, we are basically proposing the same plan uh, as our the original plan that was approved back in October 16th of 2018. Um, the change, as Regina mentioned, was um, so that we can uh, increase the, uh, we just raised the site so we can provide a balanced site um, to reduce net export off the site, to um, reduce that cost. Uh, as Regina mentioned, yeah, well, the, the only impact uh, due to the raise of elevation uh, was that our proposed grading did shift six feet closer um, into the vegetated or upland area. Um, but still, we are not proposing any direct wetland impact, just as we stated in the original application. Um, and with that, uh, we did, I did talk to Gene about the silt fencing, and currently we show it around the downhill edge, but um, <clears throat> definitely we can add some more along um, this well here, just for a during construction, there's any chance of uh, water uh, flowing in that direction or getting to this property owner, and then also um, just to prevent any spread of setting. Although all the topography does um, drain this way, just so we can keep everything on site, we're more than happy to accommodate. Thank you. Did anybody? Any questions or comments? So only one question I think I noticed on the previous one, and I apologize if staff mentioned it, um, there was a condition about identifying snow pile areas. Yes. Were those identified on the new plans? Yes, they were. We'll just make sure that they um, go on to the final plan set. But they were on this uh, original layout plan, and we plan to keep those same areas. All right. Thank you. Yep. Anybody to my left? have any questions? No. I didn't seem to have anything either. No, I'm, I was good. I didn't have any questions. Everybody yeah. addressed my concerns. Good. All right. I will make a motion to approve IW number 652, <coughs> Enfield Housing Authority Wetlands Permit Modification for Changes in the Berms, Grading, and Excavation within the Upland Review Area, Enfield Housing Authority Applicant Owner Map 19, Lot 235, HR 33 Zone. Um, Site-specific conditions to include, number one, silt fencing will also be included around the berms by the property lines on the northeast and south sides. And the final plans must include the demolition plan sheet. Um, okay. Second. Okay, good. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. 
Donna Corbin Sabinski. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Nancy Martin. Yes. Ann Collins. Yes. Phil Kober. Yes. Seven in favor. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Commission. Thank you very much. Okay. Modifications are a little easy. <laughs> this is people move around. Okay, next on our agenda is IW 653, 29 Crescent Beach Drive, Wetland Permit Activity for House Construction near Crescent Lake. George and Lynn McGalley's, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Owner applicant, map 97, lot 10, R33 zone, Lake Overlay District. Chairwoman, uh, due to abutting my property, I'll recuse myself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Could you state your name and address for the sure. record, please? Good evening, Chair and Hi. members. My name is George MacLeese. I live at 29 Crescent Beach Road. Mm -hmm. um, this is Nate. I'd let him introduce himself. I'm Nathan Nato. I'm uh, George's contractor for his project here. Okay, welcome. Welcome. Do we have a brief overview? So much paper, sorry. <laughs> Ty, again. Um, this is a wetlands application for a wetlands permit for activity in the Upland Review area, which is also 200 feet from my water course, the Crescent Lake. That's uh, for house renovations. Um, so originally, when this came in, it was a stop work order by the building department. Um, the applicants did not were not aware of the regulations for Enfield as they live in Florida. Um, so they were made aware. Rick went out to site. Um, they were told that they have to stop what they're doing, come in, apply for a building permit, apply for their wetlands permit, and then install some erosion control features on site, which they did the same day. Um, the applicants are very cooperative and willing to work with us to help solve everything and get their permits in order. Um, so basically, um, the, the applicant's project involves multiple types of home renovations, such as plumbing, electric, fixing water damage, termite damage, and replacing uneven floor floorboards. The original narrative that you got did mention that no current ENS controls were proposed, but after we had a, cons a, a, con a discussion, um, Lynn McAleese went back out to the site and she put hay bales and um, sill fencing. And there were no comments from any other department and no recommended site-specific conditions. Thank you. So yes, I'm looking for permission to uh, build on that. If you do, you have the package of uh, photos. Yes, that, we do. Okay, if you could look at the first one, which would be the aerial view. This one. Uh, the aerial view, like this. Oh, let's see. Which is the town's plant site. Yeah, I don't think. I we're just want to show you oh, here the red line there and just how close we are to that. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so you can see there's uh, the porch. The, the, the line with the X through it, it was the existing deck that was taken off mm -hmm. because of uh, termite damage and things like that. <clears throat> so what we have now, if you turn to the next page, is uh, what it is, what the original floor plan was. The original floor plan. So mm -hmm. that's what the original floor plan was without the deck. The deck is no longer on there. Okay. Okay. So what I want to propose is to go to the new floor plan. Yep. And you can see that in the green <clears throat> over here is the addition that I want to make. Since this was all termite and um, um, water damaged, we dec I decided <laughs> to, to go ahead and make this addition without knowing all the rules and regulations. So it is a nine by nine addition. Um, it doesn't get the house any closer to the lake. It just extends it this way, which the lake, as if you could see on that first one, the lake comes in a little bit. And I'm over like about, I think, <clears throat> two to three feet, if Georgie, if I'm About correct. three, three and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Three and a half feet there. And I'm looking for permission to build this. So, <clears throat> these pictures any, here. These pictures uh, that those, started with that? those pictures were to show um, the damage and the steps. This this picture here in the front is mm -hmm. the steps that were existing that were uncovered underneath the uh, deck that I took off. Okay. So the foundation was all there. 
Okay. We didn't do any digging, anything. The foundation was there. So Nate, my contractor, since we had a foundation there, started the blocking. Okay, I was wondering so if that was new. That's what that's about. Those are new? Yeah. Yes, they blocks. are new. And then we got our stop work stop working. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was confused about. I did bring more pictures of, <laughs> if, if you wanted the, of the termite damage. If you can't see them in those, those are no, good No, that's here. fine. That's fine. This house is 100 years old. Uh, Very what, cool. one, no, 1928, I believe. And it had four additions, three or four additions onto it, all of which were probably not done correctly. <laughs> so once we got in there, I decided I had to bring this house up to code. Yeah. Electrically, plumbing, uh, heating, insulation, everything's going to be brought up to code. That's good. Including the uh, underneath structural. Right. Perfect. No asbestos or? There was issues? asbestos. My was... first thing I had taken out, I had um, abatement solutions come in and take it out. It was very expensive, <laughs> but that was the very first thing I did. So that's why I didn't know what I could do with the house because I couldn't touch it until I could get that out. Mm -hmm. So once that was out, I opened it up and I found all these things. Okay. Do, you, do you plan on doing anything with the driveway? I do. There's way too much asphalt in this yard. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Is that yeah. these pictures? Is the asphalt? Well, I see. And it goes down yeah. to the yeah. lake. Yeah. Those the are lake. pictures, I believe, of the silt. And the hay bales. Right, right. See, all that asphalt goes beyond um, where my deck was. So my whole house is surrounded with asphalt. Yeah, I was wondering that. So it goes down in, towards the lake. Yes, it does. It so even, water runs down towards the lake. Into yes, the lake it does. From the asphalt. <laughs> yes, it yeah, does. That was a concern. But there is a, um, a retaining wall there, oh, a okay. seawall. Okay. So that helps it. Uh, wow. Well, a little bit. Well, it didn't help where it's coming down. Yeah. No, right. no, yeah. That's for sure. I don't know what they could do with that. Any other questions for me? So what, so what is your plan with the driveway? Yeah. Um, the I don't pavement. know yet. I'm trying to get through my house here. First. Okay. So you'd have to come back for the... Yeah, any changes to that, you'd have, have to, to come, come back. back. Any removal, any anything to the seawall, any of that, right? Oh, yeah, you yeah, can't. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a whole nother. Yeah. And seawall, I think, is FEMA, right? Yeah, that's, that well, you're getting into a. The seawall will require professionally done plans because yeah. as the FEMA is federally regulated, still have to, if you want to do any kind of changes to the seawall. Including remove it? Um, removal, repairs, you'll just have to get a licensed um, Connecticut professional to do a survey for you. Okay. Yeah. Just because of FEMA. That's. We don't regulate that part. But. I understand. Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know what at this present time what I'm going to do with that driveway. Okay. I, I, it's just a lot of asphalt and. Yeah. So, so this is increasing the um, the runoff, right? The increasing the. Um, well, I guess it's not really increasing no, impermeable, no. but you get more. No, no, more roof no. surface. So, um, if I may, I know we originally, a couple months ago, we talked about um, most of the lake communities were are unaware of original permit polling way back when. And that's one of the things we're trying to address and educate our residents on proper permit polling. And this just happens to be one of those examples of a property owner before George who didn't know about proper permits and their lot coverage and everything. So this applicant is here to fix all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and maybe let deck. the contractors know too. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it used to be a deck. So. Yeah. It's very good. Right. Yeah. But so we're. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's just okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So okay. So took the deck down. And that so it's not really any more roofs. It's, it's less. Yeah. Okay. It's actually less. Yeah. the deck down. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And they. Hmm. <clears throat> Any questions this way? No. Concerns? Comments? Any more questions? Concerns? No. No. Well, I'm happy to see you put the silt fencing up in the hay bales. That's All a good, right that away. Was a good I'm, here to, I'm here to do the right thing. I don't, you oh, know. Oh, yes, yes. 
you know, I want this house to be correct. It's going to be the house that I'm going to live in for the rest of my life, and my grandkids and all of them are coming. I don't want anything in there that's, you know, mold or asbestos oh, yeah. or bad yeah. wiring or anything. Right. So I'm going to do it correctly and by code and to all the regulations. Thank you. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Do you have a question? No. No, I'm just okay. just looking through it one more time. No comments now. Nope. I think we're good. It's just. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Good. All right. I will make a motion to approve IW number 65329 Crescent Beach <coughs> Drive wetland permit uh, activity for house <coughs> renovations uh, bordering Crescent Lake, George and Lynn McAuley's owner applicant map 97 lot 10. R33 zone lake overlay district. I will second that motion. Any discussion? Um, do do we need to make a uh, site specific condition to make sure the silt fence and hay bales are maintained for the um, yeah. uh, totality of the construction and renovations? They mm -hmm. certainly will be. Okay, sounds good. Yes. We have roll call. Donna Corbin Savinsky. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Nancy Martin. No, she's not here. She recused oh, herself. No. Sorry. Uh, Ann Collins. Yes. Phil Kober. Yes. Six in favor. Motion passes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Have a good Thank day. You. Thank you. Um, IW, next on our agenda is IW 654, 140-148 Hazard Avenue, wetland permit for Trinity Health in New England for the demolition of a one-story structure to be replaced with a two-story structure and to construction in addition to the existing cancer center. Tony Armelin, applicant, Johnson Memorial Center, Medical Center, LLC, owner, map 65, lots 86 to 90, BP and R44 zones. So, welcome, gentlemen. Um, before we start, I do want to say... <clears throat> that um, I previously worked for Trinity Health in New England. I started there in May of 2010 in the IT department, and I worked uh, just retired December 31st. Congratulations! Congratulations. Thank yeah. you, thank you. So, but but I feel I could do this application on bias. But if you want me to recuse myself, I will. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, so welcome, and uh, we have your name and address for the records. Yep. Uh, Tony Armelin, facilities manager, Johnson Memorial Hospital. Um, you want the hospital address? To no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stu Rosenberg, president of Johnson Memorial Hospital. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, George, you want to give a little overview? Thank you for coming tonight. So this is an application for Trinity Health of New England for the demolition of a one-story structure to be replaced with a two-story structure and to construct an addition to the existing cancer center. Um, so quick proposal. Um, <clears throat> Here, I lost my spot. The permit will include the approval for an addition of 5,500 square feet to the existing cancer center, and the new surgery center will be 44,549 square feet. Um, the parking plan will be reconfigured to include an additional 45 spaces. The overall impervious coverage will be increasing by 6.4%. They still meet zoning requirements through lot and bulk. The runoff from the expanding parking areas will be collected by a new stormwater catch basin system and routed through detention system before discharging to the existing drainage system. Lots of systems. The existing stormwater pond will be retrofitted to provide as a permanent pool. This modern design will be a reduction of storm peak flow rates, flood elevations, and will improve water quality according to the applicant's drainage report. 
Still fencing is proposed and can be seen on sheet 7 of 13. The geotextile silt fencing is proposed around the entire construction site, and according to the soil science report, no substantial adverse wetland impacts are expected from the proposed construction as long as these sediment controls remain in place. So. Um, the wetlands were delineated by a professional soil scientist out in the field. Um, the wetlands are mapped are currently in the man-made detention basin to the northeast side of the property, um, and they consist of approximately 15,434 square feet. The new building, the new proposed building footprint will slightly encroach into this area in a retaining wall and permanent wetland fill of 1,987 square feet will separate the building from the remaining pond. A fountain is also proposed to reduce algae buildup, um, so they will be excavating the pond an additional four feet. Um, the town GIS data it is shown on the site plans. I originally said in my staff report it was not, but I missed it. <laughs> and after a quick conversation with Dana, <laughs> that was revealed to me. Um, and, I, and because of the, because of that, I originally thought they were showing a lack of wetlands. So that was the reason for my recommended um, site-specific condition of a map amendment, since we're trying to get those up and going again. But then I realized that the wetlands are the same as our data shows. So and that's my background. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, so th thank you, Georgina. I think she covered uh, the technical part of it. Um, but just so you know, uh, the, the proposed building, the current site is almost 30 years old, mm -hmm. obviously uh, showing its age. Um, also, it's a, a bit antiquated, hard for uh, patients to navigate. It sits a little far off the road. Um, and now with newer buildings around there, um, like the, the uh, building to are east that has a green roof. Oftentimes, people are looking for a healthcare center. They pull in there first, end up back at ours. So yeah. that's why, um, with building the new building, not only will be able to facilitate for more services for the community, but we're also looking to get more viewpoint um, from Route 190. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Well said, Tony. <laughs> um, so it's, the building's obviously aging, and we. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Trinity Health in New England very quickly. Um, you know, Trinity Health in New England is St. Francis Hospital, mm -hmm. St. Mary's Hospital, Mount Sinai Rehab Hospital, Johnson, and Mercy in, in Springfield. And across the country, there's 95 hospitals, about 200, uh, 120,000 colleagues. And one of the goals that we have strategically is to enhance our outpatient services, particularly in this case, Enfield, um, because of the restrictions that we have on the building. We want to improve technology. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to enhance our patient care and add more clinical services to the community, particularly our medical staff. And that's specifically our goal. And I know we're moving out closer to the parking lot in front of the building. But the reality, what we want to do is to continue services. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work our way backwards mm -hmm. and continue operations until we end up at the end dem demolishing the building that's existing and we'll continue to have services there. That's why we want to get to the roadside and also have that um, road appeal mm -hmm. and, and have the circular parking come around inside as you'll see on the prints. So that's our goals and objectives on behalf of Trinity Health of New England and Johnson Well. I was wondering what you were going to do. <laughs> they were, yeah, yeah. They're going to keep the services going. Yeah. Hi, hi, welcome. Hi. Um, Dana Steele, professional yes. engineer with uh, J.R. Russo and Associates, office at 1 Showham Road in East Windsor. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome thanks, back. Thanks, Tony and Stu, uh, for that introduction. Uh, going to uh, turn your attention to uh, the sheet three of the plan set. We'll start, start there. Um, oh, excuse me, sheet four. Sheet four of the plan set is our existing condition plan. And um, as it was mentioned, uh, there are two wetland areas shown on the plan. One is the actual wetland, mm -hmm. which is, uh, been, was located by our soil scientists, which is the detention pond. Uh, the other is a, what we call a historical wetland. Mm -hmm. There used to be a wetland there uh, before the site was developed, but it's since been developed. And so uh, we show that on the plan as well. And so the regulated area in yellow is a 100-foot area. So you can see that most of the site is in the, in the regulated area, uh, even though uh, there, this is not currently wetland. It does look like there's probably wetland off, on the offsite where that hasn't been developed on the adjacent site. Uh, so there, there's some regulated area um, in any case. So I think we're conservatively showing it. Uh, um, I appreciate um, uh, um, uh, Georgie mentioning the uh, um, that uh, the um, 
the map amendment is not is not required. Uh, we certainly could do that, but it, it would be another uh, step, possibly a delay for us. So not having to do that would be helpful. So we appreciate that. Um, continuing on uh, to uh, the next sheet. This is our demolition plan, and just want to show. You can see um, in orange here, I have uh, the proposed building. You can see the, the reason it's located here is so that the existing building uh, can continue op operation. It's actually, it's actually <laughs> very tight. We, yeah. we, we try to keep it as far away from the pond as possible, uh, but in fact, we're even uh, cutting off the front part of the building. There's, a, there's an entry uh, canopy and there's a front vestibule here that, that we're gonna remove from the building just so we can try to keep this uh, uh, as, as far away. And see, the, bu the building itself is not into the wetlands, mm -hmm. but the grading around this corner will be. And yeah. so there's some retaining walls that are encroaching into that wetland. The next sheet, sheet six, is our layout plan. And I just want to point out here, because I know it's often a, a common, what about snow storage? Um, and so uh, our plan does indicate snow storage areas in this large island here as you come in the main entrance. And there's a lot of green space in, in the back. So um, when there's a, 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 for big storms and the need to really get rid of, there's a lot of room for, for snow storage back here. So we've indicated that on the plan. And specifically, I know it's a concern, put notes on both of the stormwater basins that are in the front of the site, no snow stock, stockpiling in the pond. So uh, that's been uh, noted on our plans. Dan, will there actually be signs posted on the property um, about the snow piles? Like, there you know, whoever's going to plow doesn't. There can be. If you'd like to add yeah. that as a condition, feel free. Yeah. Yeah, we usually, yeah. Because the snow plow person doesn't yeah. know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the plan, I mean, right, who's going to look at it uh, <laughs> When they go plowing, yeah. you know, they're not going to do it. Every time we write a contract, <laughs> we'll, we'll make them read the plans uh, first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes on the plan, it's, it's enforceable. Yeah. So yeah. you have, that's, that's really the reason for it. But yeah. practically, in terms of uh, avoiding it, a sign is, is, is better. I yeah. Agree. It, yeah. I mean, it, as somebody that maintains this property, that back green area is certainly where we prefer to stockpile snow anyway. Right. So it, it, it would yeah. be... It would be an adverse event if somebody uh, made the misconception that the pond was a good place to, to put, put it. it. <laughs> but you never know. You never know. <laughs> it, 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 does, it does create problems. Sometimes with these ponds, it's sort of enticing to put it in there because the, the parking is right up against it. Right. And it just seems like a natural place to place push it. Just snow. Push it. Uh, in this case, <coughs> with the buildings pushed up against the, the ponds, you don't have that problem. So it really would be actually more work to, to put it in the pond. <laughs> yeah. So... I don't know if a sign is necessary, but we wouldn't object to it if, if you'd like to see one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, our next page, uh, sheet seven, is the grading and erosion control plan. Yeah. Uh, and this is really uh, the plan that shows the details of what's being proposed here from a wetland standpoint. So um, I've color coded it here. You can see the historical wetlands mm -hmm. as well as the, the green around the existing pond. And uh, the blue area here represents the permanent pool we're creating. Right now, there's, there's not a permanent pool of water there. It's pretty wet because it's right at about, about the water table. Uh, but but the, the modern storm drainage design criteria likes to see a permanent pool of water. What it does is as stormwater comes in, it gives time for that water to settle. And if there's particles in that, it can settle to the bottom. And then it doesn't make it to... The, the, uh, eventually to Freshwater Brook, which is the resource that this eventually uh, makes its way to. Uh, so uh, we're proposing this, uh, this pond. It will be four feet deep in the, in the immediate area here at the corner and then not quite as deep as it tapers out beyond. But we're gonna have this, this area where I put a fountain in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it'll, it'll look nice and we're gonna, we're gonna landscape it uh, so that it, it, looks, it looks nice. Um, so the areas in pink are the areas where we are, do have wetland uh, uh, impact, permanent impact. Um, because of this, these uh, two-tiered retaining walls that are on, to, to protect the building uh, from that, that area, uh, we, are, we do have some uh, permanent loss of, of wetlands in, in that area. And at this end, in order to accommodate a, uh, an entrance-only drive for emergency vehicles and for <coughs> delivery vehicles, um, uh, along the eastern boundary of the site. And so that's going to require uh, a little bit of encroachment at that end. So the total between the two pink areas, a little less than 2,000 square feet. Um, uh, but 
Um, we're also enhancing the wetland that's there by providing the permanent pool and expanding it. So uh, we had some room because they, uh, Trinity wanted to kind of work with the shape of the site. And so they made this sort of interesting shape uh, building. It's not, it's not a rectangle. As you can see, it tapers in and that gives us room to nice. expand the basin. And so that orange area there is expansion. So we're, 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 we're losing some and we're gaining some. And so in the end result, it's really, it's, it's not going to be any smaller. It's going to be actually a little bigger uh, and it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, uh, yeah, that, I think that's all I need to, um, to go over. So I'm going to leave it on that sheet. I'm going to ask our soil scientist, uh, Rick Zulik, to come up now. Uh, he is the one who uh, delineated the, the wetlands and uh, just uh, talk about his report. And um, I, I believe uh, that, uh, that, that the, the impacts here have been properly mitigated. Rick? Just real quick while he's coming up, where's sure. the construction entrance going to be? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. We're proposing a construction en entrance <coughs> off of Middle Road. Okay. Uh, that's, it's, uh, it, it was initially going to be only temporary for construction, but then the fire department saw it and said, oh, we would really love to have another way into this site. <laughs> and the regulations do allow the fire department to, because this is a buffer area right here, because it's residential across the street, but, bank, but right. we, are, we are allowed to encroach for, for emergency access purposes. So, so we're proposing that. But, but this access here is going to be um, uh, grass pavers, so it's not even oh, going to look like a driveway. Nice. Excuse me, Chair. There was um, two more things since Dana is still up here. Um, one, um, when staff was reviewing the site plans just one more time a day, we did notice that the snow piling is pretty adjacent to the buffer. Um, and we kind of concluded, based off the stormwater report, that it probably it appears to not be an impact to the wetlands, but I just wanted to let you know. And the other thing was is that this property is in the aquifer protection area. Um, both water companies were notified, and Connecticut Water did recommend um, a site-specific condition of, um, Dana can word it better than I I can't, but less road salt. Is that what she said? Yeah, uh, there, there was actually, we talked about three things. I met, uh, I spoke with, with Jennifer from Connecticut Water. Uh, Jessica. Don't remember her last name. Jessica DeMar. Jessica DeMar, thank you. Um, and uh, she, um, she mentioned three things. One, uh, that because this, this half of the, of the site is, is within the aquifer area for the Powder Hollow public, there's a public well in Powder Hollow. It's quite a ways away, but I, but the influence for that well, I guess, is quite significant. So so this is right at the outer boundaries of that of that area of influence. Uh, but because uh, because the area of our where we're really increasing is is within that, uh, she she wanted to see some uh, precautions taken, and we had a discussion, and we agreed that yeah, we could we could uh, limit the amount of salt used uh, on the site for uh, for for de-icing. There's there's other other uh, like potassium chloride that can be used instead of sodium chloride, um, but to, to, to limit the amount of salt because that was a concern. Uh, and so we're going to add that to our, uh, our post-construction maintenance schedule. So um, the aquifer regulations really fall under the Planning and Zoning Commission, not the Wetlands Commission. So I, that's why I didn't mention it, but it's, you know, I'm not yeah, that's uh, fine. mine to, uh, to, to share that. The other items were um, she'd like to see uh, some uh, some minor modifications made to our storm drainage to wherever we can to uh, try to eliminate a curbing and let the water flow into the grass areas first before getting into a catch basin. It's really hard to do on this site because it's already <laughs> so developed, but we did identify a couple areas where we could make some minor tweaks that are really outside the regulated, wetland regulated area anyway. Uh, so again, didn't, didn't uh, uh, mention that. And there was, there was one other other item, um, but it wasn't related to uh, w wetlands. So we're going to address it with planning and zoning, uh, and uh, she's going to be sending a, a letter to, to Georgie, mm -hmm. and uh, so planning and zoning will have an opportunity to incorporate uh, those into the final plans. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Rick? There you are. You want the, uh, you're going to work from there, or you want to come up to the... To <coughs> Could you just state your name and address for the record, please? For the record, my name is Richard Zulick. <clears throat> I'm a just, yeah, soil just soil use soil. the mic, please. Yeah. Oh, hold It's being taped. For the record, my name is Richard Zulick. I'm a professional soil scientist. 
with data engineering and surveying, LLC. <clears throat> I did the wetland delineation on this property and um, found a, an existing wetland area, which is on the, on the plan labeled B8 to B24. Um, it consists of about 15,000 plus uh, square feet of area. This is a man-made basin. It's at the northeast corner of the property. <clears throat> there were hydric soils identified and, and there was an impoundment of some water in there. So it clearly um, satisfied the criteria for wetland soils. In, typically in wetlands, I, I'm able to, to sit here and, and tell you about a tremendous amount of functions and values. In that this is a very small area and it's man-made, uh, it really um, has limited functions and values. So the functions that I identified were certainly groundwater recharge and some uh, nutrient removal. But currently, it's a marginally functioning wetland uh, at best. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the soils in the area really are eudorothins. This is all areas has been bulldozed and moved mm -hmm. by man. Um, it's, it, was a, it was a tough area. Um, to the west, I believe off of the property, there are rapol soils. And, um, and I did, I'm not sure they're shown on the plan. No. If they're off the property, they, but they, um, there are some rapol soils to the west, but they're quite a distance away. Mm -hmm. um, some filling may have occurred from past development. I really can't speak to that. Uh, it, it does appear as though the, the wetland mapping from NRCS and the town indicates that was the case, but honestly, I'd have to use a backhoe and <laughs> dig through the <laughs> pavement and dig under the buildings. I mean, I, it just, it just didn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make um, sense, no. The, the wetlands that exist wow. today are shown on the plan. Mm -hmm. The building will partially in, in, encroach on the detention basin. Um, there is some fill that's going to be brought in uh, for the second driveway entrance on the new building and a retaining wall. Uh, but there's mitigation proposed, which is expansion of the existing basin. That expansion um, will probably have, you know, little function initially, but these areas do develop into hydric soils, um, and it will, um, it will provide uh, additional uh, function and value um, to the area or to the wetland because it's going to be it's going to be bigger. Uh, there's uh, retrofitting of the existing dry, dry basin, uh, the, the wet pond with a permanent pool, and a foundation uh, a fountain is proposed, uh, which is a real neat water feature. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to certainly going to look nice, so it'll add some value in that regard. Um, and I believe the area of proposed enhancement is a, is about 11,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. uh, there are really no significant negative impacts that I can identify as a result of this proposed activity. Um, and honestly, there, there probably will be some additional um, mm -hmm. positive impacts, mm -hmm. such as uh, increased storage, uh, some increased wildlife habitat, and, um, and there's plantings, which are going to be spoken about. I think that, that will enhance the area as well. Mm -hmm. So really, unless you have any other questions regarding the wetland, I, um, that's about all I've got to say. Thank, thank you, Rick. Um, <clears throat> at this time, I'll ask uh, Terry Hahn, our landscape architect, to come up. And I'll move my board down so she can put up her plan. Thank you. Terry Hahn, professional landscape architect, LADA PC. Um, we're out of Simsbury, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So I remember back when I was a kid driving by this and the wetland <laughs> way back when uh, had a little bit more oomph to it than it currently does. It, right now it's Phragmites and it doesn't, there's not much happening there. So one of the benefits of the expansion and changes here is that we can sort of take away what's there and sort of start with a newer palette. 
So our planting is fairly extensive um, and includes a wide variety of um, primarily native plant material, but really habitat plant material. So stuff that's going to look a little nice, some grasses, you know, some fruits, um, some flowers, um, especially pollinator stuff. There's a lot of uh, pollinator choices here um, that we've that we've chosen. And also, um, we now have a open water, so we can do water's edge plantings and do some other sort of graduated uh, planting that to um, enhance the overall detention basin. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we're focused on in, in this particular area. The rest of the site, uh, we're looking at seasonal plantings, again, some pollinator elements, um, shade trees, uh, with your snow, the snow question, because the parking lot has changed, we've moved and placed the trees so that they can do a straight shot out because you know they're going to do it whether I put trees there or not. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> um, so we've sort of taken care of that, that yeah. kind of element. Um, the other thing, although it's not related to the wetlands, one of the things that happens on the um, buffer area along Middle Road is over the years, the bottom branches are all gone, so we put in large-scale rhododendrons and some bayberry bushes that will just take that middle zone up to about 10, 12 feet and eventually yeah. fill that all in because you can't get the branches back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, And I don't want to go in there and start digging stuff out. So right. if I do it on the edge, then everybody gets what they want. That'd be nice. Yeah. So, so that's, that's pretty much any mm -hmm. questions. No, I no, go ahead. Sorry, I have a question um, in regards to the pond itself and future maintenance of that. Mm -hmm. um, what does that look like? Oh, that's a good. It's a good question. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. this existing yeah. one hasn't been maintained very well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, um, wondering where we're going with the, that. The, the, the pond may need uh, to to be dredged. Um, typically, uh, DEP recommends every five to ten years uh, to, to dredge a pond. It really depends on how much sediment is making it into it. So they're going to have to uh, monitor it and you can do that just with a stadia rod into the, in, in, into the pond to see, to see how, how deep the water is and if it's getting, getting too shallow then Tony's going to know that it's time to, uh, to, to do that. So um, uh, that's a, a, a good mm, yeah. point and I think that's um, you know, something that's it's a part of our, our maintenance schedule. So um, uh, hopefully when they need to do that kind of maintenance, they don't need to come back for another permit. Uh, they, they can just uh, take care of that because it's understood that that's going to be that's happening the in the future. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate you mentioning that. It's a good, uh, good point. Just Phragmites is in the air. You know, that's, mm -hmm. So one of the things in order to keep that from this particular area, we have new seed mixes, but you will actually have to go in as they start to sort of clump up and go in and take them out. Mm -hmm. um, so, because otherwise, the, uh, once they get started, it, they just spread. So that is something that'll need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. I, I did want to just mention as uh, uh, I, I'm a landscape designer and uh, certified Connecticut nurseryman, uh, thank you for choosing plants that are actually available and you can actually <laughs> get in um, our zone. So thank you, it's, it's refreshing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's helpful. Yeah. Are there any other comments? Uh, I'd just like to uh, conclude uh, by uh, saying a, a thank you for, for hearing our, our presentation. We think what we've presented to you uh, is, uh, is a positive uh, thing, that it's going to improve uh, the, the area. It's not going to have any adverse impacts on wetlands, but actually going to make them function better. And uh, so we hope you'll consider uh, approving this tonight. Um, I think, uh, as Georgiana mentioned, uh, the first condition, site-specific condition about the map amendment does not need to be included. Um, and uh, if you want to include the additional condition about the sign, you can. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you want to include a condition about uh, uh, maintenance of the, uh, of the pond, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that as, as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Chairwoman, can I ask yes. a question um, mm -hmm. to Georgiana? Can you, can you review and explain to me the map amendment piece one more time? Yep. Um, so as of 2022, we're kind of re-implementing our map amendments. Um, those applications showing a lack of wetlands um, will be asked to, to apply for a map amendment 
because as of right now, our data is very out of date, um, which is we're lucky to have the soil science scientists go out into the field and give us this up-to-date information. Um, but in the past, we haven't really followed that protocol, so we're trying to make it better going forward. So it's just when um, they show a lack of wetlands, but they identified the wetlands on site and they're showing more wetlands than what our data shows. Thank you. And then um, I do have an additional question. Um, Dana, earlier when you were mentioning in your presentation about coming back to wetlands, was that in regards to the dredging? Yeah. So and with that being said, um, my thinking is instead of having them come back to do dredging, you can make it a site-specific condition um, and maybe also consider the type of road salt they're going to use. Mm -hmm. It's yep. your discretion, of course. Yeah, I know that. Uh, Dana, one thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If we make that a, a site-specific uh, recommendation, Georgie, will they let you know when they do it? Depends on how you word the site specific. Like I know just for an example, a recent project that we approved, we made a site specific recommendation that they give us their maintenance plan whenever they plan on doing stormwater catch basin maintenance. Well, um, it might be uh, good to put in that they just tell you when they're going to do it so that you can tell us and put a note in the file. Mm -hmm. If the applicants are okay with that. Yeah, you could say, the condition could say something like, uh, um, maintenance of the stormwater basin, uh, uh, or f future maintenance of the stormwater basin uh, is allowed under this permit provided the applicant notifies the uh, planning staff prior to conducting maintenance activities. And it must be done? Well, yeah. yeah, something like maintenance plan must be submitted with the final plans and may be permitted based on... Mm. Maintenance plans must be provided for the final plans and including notification of pond dredging and catch basin management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maintenance plan. Works. Yeah, and usually there's a time, like you do it once a year or twice yeah. a year. Or a, a dredging, you wouldn't time, do that frequently. For, I said, I know well, the maintenance, of the, yeah. the maintenance of the pond, just the overall oh, sure. yeah, checking the, it out. Yeah, and gonna, I, I don't want to see you guys come back over and over and over again <laughs> right, and pay, yeah. pay the application <laughs> yeah. fees just for dredging. Yeah. Because um, we, we've yeah. done similar things for site specifics. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, the, so the, the reduced curb portion, that's not really us? No. That's a planning and zoning issue, yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, planning and zoning. And, uh, Dana, you did mention on, well, on this drainage report, I don't know who wrote it. That was uh, me. Okay, yeah, it was you. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> you do mention on the back page the pocket ponds, and it usually include the four bays for sediment capture, and it's not really needed. If, if for some reason during this maintenance process you came across that it might be needed, would they add them? Or? We could. Um, to to, to you? do four bays, what you'd have to do is, is put a, a stone uh, berm across across here. Normally with a bay, you, you wouldn't want just, just a stone berm because it doesn't actually contain the water. The water goes right through the stone. Right. You can face it with a smaller stone, which catches more of it. Uh, you can put a filter fabric in, which will uh, uh, trap the sediment. Mm -hmm. Um, but the problem with that is it clogs pretty right. quickly and you're out there having to, to get in there maybe more than you want to have to. Um, the, with these retrofits, if this was like from scratch, we'd have, we'd have four bays, but yeah. we're trying to uh, uh, have minimal impact and, and changes. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, a, and putting in a solid berm would be a problem because that would raise the water level and it would back up in the system and it wouldn't drain. So it's, yeah. it's really the... The, the way the system is coming, the, the pipes coming in are really lower than ideally you'd want them to be. You'd like to have them up higher, but this is, this is what we're dealing with. This is an existing site that we're trying to retrofit, make better, and I think we've done uh, some, some significant improvements. And, uh, but but I, I wanted to be uh, forthright about mm -hmm. uh, the things that, that we didn't do. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for how, explaining that. <laughs> yeah. How does the fountain impact the um, <coughs> the func functionality of the uh, of the um, pool? Yeah. Well, it, it's going to keep down uh, algae growth, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and the al algae growth increases uh, uh, nitrogen nutrients in the in the water. So it's um, it, there's I think there's less. Um, 
I don't know if Rick can can, can add to this. Biological it, oxygen. Yeah, so it's yeah. It, it reduces the um, uh, the aquatic value maybe for for um, aquatic life um, and, and also nutrient uptake. It just kind of limits it more if the, if there's so much nutrients already in the water, it just doesn't have room to absorb as much. I believe that's a a, a, a factor as well. So. Um, does it negatively idea. affect the sedimentation or any of that issues? No, because it, it, it's, it's just um, on the on the surface. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, could could it stir it up? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, it's. Um, uh, I assume there's got to be some protection in the pump system. I don't think that's a, that, that's not a significant concern. I mean, I I suppose it it could a little. Uh, it's it's a valid question. Um, not really sure. Rick, do you have any It could, it could increase suspended sediments slightly, but honestly, the algae uh, creates such a muck layer um, that's going to decrease the, um, the groundwater recharge and the ability of water to perk out of the system. Okay. So um, honestly, while you can always find negative impacts from things that are slight, uh, I think it it's, will enhance it. I think mm -hmm. it's a good thing. Good. They have, a, they have one near Brooks Brothers, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> one of my experiences with ponds um, has been that um, if for some reason we have one of those years where we have no rain for 65 days mm -hmm. and that pond level starts to lower, there's a point at which you shut the fountain off. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because it just it's not doing anything. It's sucking sediment off the bottom. It's it's not doing its thing. So really that is your protection from what it is you're gonna do. And in this Perfect. case, like I said, we have all seen in the last ten years that year where it doesn't rain. Mm -hmm. So um, you can only take this the you can only have the fountain function for those parameters. Perfect. So, and that might be in the maintenance plan, right? Sort yeah, of. sounds like another good item for the maintenance schedule, yeah. <laughs> uh, which which we do have on the plans already. But I'm gonna I'm gonna update Take it based it on your condition. So, thank you. Do you have any more questions to my right to my left? Any concerns? Questions? Good. All right. I will make a motion to approve IW number six fifty four. 140 through 148 Hazard Avenue. Wetlands permit for Trinity Health of New England for the demolition of a one-story structure to be replaced with a two-story structure and to construct an addition to the existing cancer center. Tony Armelin, applicant John, um, is that? Is that Johnson? Should it be Johnson? Johnson. Yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Johnson Memorial Medical Center LLC owner, map 65, lots 86 through 90, BP and R44 zones, uh, with the site-specific conditions of uh, number one, there'll be signage for um, snow pile uh, where snow piles should not be in the um, sedimentation um, pond. And um, number two, that uh, reduced salt for winter weather um, be used. And for number three, a maintenance plan must be submitted with the final plans uh, that includes uh, dredging the catch basin and um, including uh, I don't know how to put it, fountain, yeah, <laughs> pond maintenance. Um, with final plans. Um, excuse me, Commissioner Zorda, does that include notifying the planning department for pond dredging and stormwater maintenance? Thank yeah. you, yes. Mm -hmm. So four is high specifics or three? And three just is just three. the long one, okay. Just yeah, one just long three. one. Yeah. <laughs> one long one. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay, any discussion? Let me see none, can we have roll call? Donna Corbin Savinsky. Yes. Virginia Higley. Yes. Robert Hendrickson. Yes. Kevin Zorda. Yes. Nancy Martin. Yes. Ann Collins. Yes. Bill Colbert. Yes. Seven in Colbert. favor. Seven in favor. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Good luck Thank with your you. project. Thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to see when it's all done. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Chair. Do you know who seconded 29 Crescent Beach? Crescent Pardon? Beach was Phil. Phil Colbert. 
Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's the most team members we've ever had in there. I know it. Oh, I wrote it down too. So next on our agenda, thank you, gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you, and, and ma'am, <laughs> ladies. Yeah. Okay. Next on our agenda is the enforcement reports. One seventy four, one thirty, Shaker Road update. So we have not heard anything back yet from this applicant. He is supposed to update us. Um, the last we heard, if I remember correctly, he was planning on moving things from the wetlands, cleaning up his site a little bit. Um, but as of today, we have not heard anything back yet. Yeah, but they've stopped doing whatever. Yes. Um, then. The next one is 283 George Washington Road update. Yep. So um, Rick and I did go out to site. Um, he has begun cleaning up the site. He's got a he's got a couple dumpsters on site, um, but due to his health, um, it's just going to take him a little bit longer than what he originally anticipated. Um, so you um, on your desk, you should have gotten an, an email update between um, Rick Rochelle and James. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much where that is. Okay. So we didn't do the plan then. Yeah. No. Not yet, no. No, but he did put on here right. a fall, which I I didn't expect it would be that soon, actually. Mm. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, early fall. Um Okay. Do you have any questions about them? No. Nope. No. Um next is report of planning staff. I don't have anything to report. Okay. So you did <clears throat> Call me the other day, but then hung up and you oh, said you'd get back to me. I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> you figured it out, y'all. So I was a little confused with an application we got for a building permit. It's for a vacant lot um, over on Elm Street. The wetlands cut into the back north corner, and the 100 foot up in the view area stops right before construction. So that's why I didn't call you back because I originally. I don't know why I had the water course footage in my head. So I was like, oh, the whole property's in the up interview area. It's 200 feet. But then Lori was like, it's 100. And I was like, oh, because I just did the 29 Crescent Beach staff report. So I had 200 in my head. Um, so they're actually not in the up interview area. And they have silt fencing around their entire pro project. And they have additional silt fencing within the project for their soil stockpiling. OK. So good. Not no concerns. I was just wondering. <laughs> um, so next is, I did have a question. <clears throat> So the POCD meeting is Thursday, April 21st. 6.30 p.m. at the Annex Auditorium, right. 124 North Maple Street. How many people plan on going? I'm not sure yet. I'm not available. We have a family issue. That's fine. I'm li yeah, he's planning on going. So Phil and myself? Sorry. Yeah. Jenny will be there? I'm not available. Four. So there will be four of us there, so um, we will have a quorum. Commissioner Cobert, are you going for all commissions, all three commissions? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'll talk to Lori about how that works with FOIA. Um, I know we got a couple of planning commissioners who are going to be going as well. Um, I don't think it will be a problem, but I'll double check with her. Well, we can go. I mean, it's just that it is going to be a quorum, if, yeah. and then you have to note. Yeah, put a notice out that we will be there as a quorum, as a special meeting type thing, well, because there is a quorum. Public. Yeah, it is, but it doesn't matter. If, if, the four, if all of us showed up in a restaurant, we're sitting in a restaurant together, it's still, it's, yeah. it's still considered a quorum, and we have to publicize okay. it. I, I, it's either called a caucus meeting or it's some other kind of meeting name, right. something with the FOIA, you know, their weird names. Right, and we have, to, we have <laughs> um, to notify people. So, yeah, I will I'll talk to Lori when I see her about it. It just slipped my mind yesterday. Yeah, um, thank you. I'll remind you. Yep, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> That's all. Um, so next is new application be received. We as, have none. As of right now, I have no applications being received. Okay. Next. Next. Adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Means adjourn. It's 8.08. <laughs> <laughs>